In this video, we are creating this stunning geode style clock. Let's jump right in. So the first thing we need to do is create our base and I have my MDF cut up to size. This is going to be a 70 centimeter clock. And the first thing I want to do is attach this frame at the back of the MDF. And the reason I want to do that is because my client wants a drop edge. So whatever resin that we pour on the clock, we want it to pour over the side of the clock. So I'm going to attach this frame and what I'm going to use to do that is some wood glue and um, brad nails and clamps. So it's the next day and my glue is all dry. And the next thing I want to do is round over the edges of this clock face. And the reason I want to do that is because um, when we do our resin pour, if there's a 90 degree edge, the resin isn't going to flow over or there's going to be a lot more surface tension. So I want to make sure my edges are nice and round and I'm going to use my router to go ahead and round over these edges. Once that is done, I'm going to go ahead and use my orbital sander and sand out the sides of the clock just so that the frame and the clock face are seamless. My glue up in this case was really good so sanding is enough to get a nice seamless edge on this one but if you do end up with some gaps you can fill in those with some wood filler and sand them down and you will be good to go. I also used um, my router bit to um, create a little sort of uh, cavity for my clock mechanism to go in and this little handy dandy depth gauge was perfect to make sure I had the right depth to get my clock mechanism into that hole and make sure that it comes out enough on the other side. Okay, so now that the dusty bit is out of the way, it is time to prime the board and I'm using gesso and a paint roller to do that. I do like to use um, at least two to three coats of gesso and what this does is seals the wood so that when you pour in your resin and you have moisture on your board um, it does not get into the surface of the MDF. I am also making sure that I prime those edges well enough as well. I want to apologize if you can hear loud snoring in the back of this video as I'm doing this voiceover. My dog has recently had um, surgery and he is still recovering from it and has been snorty and snoring with a bit of a sore throat so yeah so if you hear snoring that's him in the back. Okay so now we are finally ready for some resin and the first thing I do is sort of use a pencil and lay out where I want my crystals to be and what I want to do is put down some of these crystals first. So I have mixed up my J Diction Officials resin and I have some crushed glass, some um, quartz chips and some diamond dust and what I like to do is use a tub, add my crushed glass and coat it lightly with the resin and then I can put this down on my surface and I'm going to top it up with some quartz and diamond dust for a little bit of extra sparkle. So I've just put down like a very very thin line of resin um, just where I want my crystals to go and this is so that um, when I do the pour I, I have this clock in sections so I don't want the resin to overflow into the next section. You'll understand more about this when I actually start to pour the resin. Okay so my crystals are now dry, the resin has cured and these are now nice and um, secure on the base. What I've done is gone ahead and taped the sides of the clock where I'm going to be pouring and like I said this clock is in two sections and I'm only doing the top and the bottom section where I have the crystals at the moment so that's the area that I have taped and the reason you want to tape your sides is for when you do a dirty pour or uh, an exotic pour and you want your edges to have that resin flow over you want to tape your edges so that when your resin is tacky 
you can pull the tape off and that's when you get those effects flow over your edge. So the colors that I'm going for this section are mainly white and grays with a touch of gold. And I'm using a mix of micas and pigment paste and some opaque and translucent colors, just because I feel like this gives a nice depth to the piece. So I'm going to start off with the white at the edge of my crystals, followed by the gray. And I am doing this on both the top and the bottom. After the gray, I have decided I want to do a mini dirty pour. So I'm going to combine a couple of colors together into a cup and pour them out. This gives a nice sort of ribbony, um, natural, flowy effect to the resin, which I absolutely love. And then it's a case of just filling in the gaps with um, the colors and I'm just trying to see what looks nice next to each other and putting in a balance between the micas and the pastes. Don't be afraid to use your fingers at this stage to fill in the gaps. Um, I like to do that once again just to give it a nice flow and nice movement to the piece. So once I'm happy with this section, I'm going to leave this to cure. I will pop the bubbles and keep an eye on them as they come up to the surface. And I'm going to be back the next day for the next step. So this was part one of the video. Um, I decided to do this video in two parts for the sake of the length of the video. Stay tuned for the next and the final part in which we finish this beautiful clock. Leave me a comment to let me know what you think of this so far. And I will see you in part two.